Stacy, make her laugh. Oh, she's I not laughing. I am very serious this time. <laughs> We're live at Epic Headquarters. No laughing this time. You didn't get me, Sid. The laughing now. It's just beginning. So we have a new build coming out tomorrow. Yes, oh, we hope so. We hope we're, so. We're, we're doing final testing pass, and so hopefully it'll be all good. Um, there's even a small chance we'll release it this evening if uh, oh, we finish testing awesome. it. So yeah. we'll see. Um, it has frag fingers center. crossed. It has Frag Center in it. Frag Center, and we're looking forward to getting uh, seeing out what you guys think of that and starting to send us more videos and help us make it really cool. That video that you saw before, right, with from Zacubus, that was one of the videos that will be on Frag Center, and yeah. also his one from last week. I posted it online, but in case you missed it, it will be on Frag Center as well. Yeah. So. If the build doesn't come out, we can always blame Zach because yeah, it will be Zach's fault. It will be everything. Is I Zach's think fault. it's Pete's fault or <laughs> Pete K. <Kay. laughs> <laughs> one of the two. With one of the two Pete. One of the two. Pete yeah. or repeat. So we have today. We have Steve. We have Sydney, and we have Jim. And we are. Uh, yesterday we had a play test that was so awesome, and we played a map <laughs> that just made me really happy, and it was um, DM Sand. DM Sand by Gooba. By Gooba. Gooba. And it's kind of not really any themed yet, except for sand. Mm. But it kind of oh. looks like an Egyptian theme. It looks I like a UT ninety nine yeah, Egyptian map. Yes, I wouldn't even necessarily call it like Egyptian. I think Dom it's Dom more, more like a little like bit more, you know, Middle Eastern. Middle theme. Eastern. It is. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. I, I playing it yesterday. It was it, everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody agreed that it was a super fun map, and I won't say anything else other than that. Other than we're going to take a look at it. I don't want to. I want to blow it. I was. I was just really happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that he actually intended it necessarily to be. Oh Egyptian. well, I, I will. Know. I will definitely steer him in that direction. Yeah. But either yeah. way, it's nice to see him try and push different themes. And yeah. Yeah. Just add more variety to the game that way. Um, hey, you have a friend request. Dun dun dun. Every time he starts it up, there's a friend <laughs> request. <laughs> All right, Shelly, you can switch over. There it is. It was interesting to me, before you even get into the gameplay, like how much atmosphere and everything he could capture with basically one texture. Yes, exactly. <laughs> There's like one material here. And anyway, it's, it's just really cool. Yeah, we played a day on this. Um, and we he actually, did. he was, when he was here for the community event, he was saying he was trying to actually get it ready for that weekend to try and get some playtime in with all the guys when they were all here. Um, but being the guy that he is and doing the bazillion things doing that he does. All the <laughs> things. Doing all the things as Gooba yeah, does. Yeah, it didn't quite make it. Um, but from we what I understood, he was intending this to be a, a TDM capable map, um, as well as just a generally you know, fun FFA map. And the spaces in here, are really cool, identifiable, lots of iconic stuff going on. Um, this is the damage spawn up here, and this is a little cubby on the other side with the thigh pads where we had some discussion over, you know, how how valuable should that be? Should that be? Should some ammo be in there? But then if you throw shock ammo in here, then you make it too easy maybe to camp it out and wait for the thing. But I don't know. I think it has potential for TDM to be an interesting spot that you actually kind of want to camp out to try and help secure this up here. Um, and you kind of, you know, it's a nice risk reward thing being kind of locked in here. I don't know if you can actually, yeah, probably not. <laughs> don't try it. I'm not going to try now anyways. Um, another thing that's cool too is in all his open kind of designs of the big rooms, he has various slopes going on that are actually useful and fun to navigate around. Um, and if that's just going up or riding them and wall dodging back and forth, just based on the nature of the slopes, you can get nice, you know, repeated wall dodges out of them and you'd don't drop off too fast, which is really fun to do. Um, yeah, to there's, there's a lot of spaces in this map that to me were a great use of the slope dodge without it feeling like it was forced in there or made just so that there would yeah, be it's a not, slope not dodge. Yeah, it's an optional thing, right? It's, it's, it adds yeah. to the variety of the movement as opposed to, you know, oh, instead of putting an elevator here, I put a slope there purely because slope, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in this case, it actually adds some interest to the combat, and you can just try different things while you're in the middle of a battle, and it makes it a lot more interesting. Um, same with some of these over here. I mean, that's a valid shortcut kind of thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, he also has a ton of power-ups in here. One thing that people t 
So that is one of the things. Yeah. Yep, Berserk up here. It's kind of easy to miss if you don't know that it's there, if you're not necessarily paying attention to over here. Um, one bit that people got frustrated with a little bit was this cliff over here, kind of looking like it should be something where you could potentially connect to a different area or, f or keep flowing around. I don't know if it really needs to be sheer drop. It could just have some, you know, little just floor trim there or something that's just high enough so you don't actually straight walk out, yeah. but you can still shoot people over it or knock them over or whatever. It just it it's it looks appealing like you should go down there and when it should look scary right. to go down there. Um, this is a neat power up position too. I'm actually kind of wondering if switching belt and U damage might be a worthwhile thing, um, just because this is actually much more easily contested or you get much more easily knocked off, and it could be more interesting for the TDM dynamic to allow the U damage to be something you can grab to try and break control of this spot because taking you damage from here over there you kind of get that but it doesn't necessarily funnel that well I don't know I guess it's not a big thing it's just something to play around there with well there were a lot of times where actually like I knew people were going for the belt it was a very central hub and I was able to come in on the bottom floor and fire up with confidence because I had the U damage yeah. so one thing in, in this particular room actually going back is that's a little bit tricky to figure out is for people to actually know how to get up here short of just impact hammer jumping or rocket jumping. Um, and there's that one connector over here that's right opposite the shield belt but you can actually also go up in these windows and then try and land out here without falling off. <laughs> which <laughs> my I don't know if that was intended or not but it was cool. No, I think it's by design because um, the other side it's, it's symmetrical and there's another elevator on the other side but it doesn't have all the windows and stuff mm -hmm. so I think it's intentional but it might actually be nice to just turn it into something where you can more easily walk out on this ledge and flow. It's not. I don't I think, think it's, it's necessary. Is what I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I didn't even find it. It was Zach yeah. was the one who found it. Oh, nice! And I was chasing him at one point and watched him run in the window, and then yeah. I was like, Yeah, oh, that does look like it. I see what you did there. Yeah. I don't think it's necessary to restrict flow in only one direction here and make it that tricky to safely land down here and get up. But I don't know. Again, just something else to try and play with. Um, on the other side of the map, the armor room is also kind of interesting, which is like a oh. slope wall. Slope central in this space. Um, you have this super narrow funnel. Yeah, yeah I really armor. like this area. It's a great room. Um, you can actually get quite far on these you slopes, too. Put the flat um, in there. I have to agree. Some people in the forums also pointed out the slow elevator. I don't know if it's really necessary. Um, I, can <laughs> see, I can see the reasoning <laughs> or the thought. It would so people it don't would hit be their heads. No, well, I mean, <laughs> so doing something like that would make sense if there weren't all these other options to also get up there. Because basically, there's, there's never I any reason to really to take this, and it's never a fair trade-off or anything, because it's not an interesting choice, right? You can always do this and be up here much quicker. Um, therefore, having that elevator be slow is kind of, I don't know, a moot point, I think. Uh, unless it, you know, if it f were faster and actually allowed you to maybe change levels on top of that or something, it could be. Well, well I kind of get like, then maybe what he was trying to avoid was if you don't jump up there, if you jump up there, all you're going to do is hit your head and that could be frustrating to you. So. That's a great yeah. spot up there with the sniper because yeah. people usually just come running across that ramp. Yeah, but this was a really fun spot to observe like combat, to yeah. interrupt combat and just gently fight over and, and you know, enjoy the slope gameplay there. Um, how much spot up here is neat to the rocket launcher area. Yep. I think overall it was in a pretty good compromise between open spaces and enclosed spaces around interesting items. Um, I think you kind of managed to do a nice open space that's easy to read without making it feel, I don't know, like <coughs> 2K4 open town where it's like yeah. wide and sprawling for no good purpose other than to accommodate people flying all over the place. Um, it just feels right, and it had a mm -hmm. has really great flow to it. Um, people always get funneled back into combat nicely, and yeah, I mean, I'm excited about this, and also looking forward to what he's going to do visually, and I'm sure he's going to do too. more paint overs and stuff eventually. Um, yeah, I think that out of out of all the maps we've seen in the game so far, this is the best community map that we've seen, in my opinion. At least in terms of. Oh, except for that wall. TDM, DM kind <laughs> of <laughs> gameplay, yeah. yeah. Um, people, were, people were slope dodging out of the map at that one. <coughs> Berg spot. was pretty cool. Which one? Berg. 
Oh, oh yeah. I missed that one. I missed that one. Yeah, the Everybody well, was raving there's... about that one as well. I missed that one. There's a ton of cool maps. So yeah. It's like this one just captured like, like it had a really good really feel easy. visually. It had a really good gameplay. Yeah, it was a good use of interesting um, composition, even in the simple yeah, state. Yeah, it was just yeah. I really are those uh, are those actually resting on that level, or how do those? Uh, <coughs> what are you talking about? Actually, kind of cool. The flags draped across. Like they're draped across. Like they're draped across yeah. is really nice. Yeah. That looks very. The artistic yeah. side yep. of Gooba there. It'd be nice to see that moving eventually, and I'm sure he has plans for that. And but yeah, awesome job, dude. Uh, we really enjoyed it. Yeah, Gooba, we had fun on this one. Stop doing, no, keep doing great, amazing things. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing everything. Stop okay. doing everything, no, but keep, keep doing, doing everything. <laughs> Love it. Can right. people get this now? It's on the forums. It's on the forums, yeah. so make sure you head over to the forums and check it out. I think a lot of people really yep. like this. DM Sand. DM Sand by Gooba. So now, dun, dun, dun. We're going to do the Q novel. <laughs> Actually, real quick, before we do Q&A, I just wanted to mention the list of the major things to look for in the build. So we oh, awesome. Uh, Frag Center. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, polish and improvements to the uh, spectating camera system, so it'll uh, be interesting feedback. We did incorporate a lot of... Uh, Changes based on feedback, a lot of bug fixes. There's still a lot more on the list of things I'd like to do to it, but uh, it's definitely a getting a lot more usable. Um, we also have first-person spectating uh, working a lot better, including first-person weapons. Yes. They're not quite perfect, but again, it's a it's now a usable system. Um, got some new map shells. We've got uh, Solo, Team uh, Solo, CTF Mine, CTF Mine, and and Morbius, of course. It's <laughs> <laughs> Which we think will be one of the top dual It will maps be the top played map in the game, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, it took me all of a, a couple hours to put together. Yeah. So. Um, we've got some, we've got some, uh, we now show uh, during the game you can bring up uh, in match stats in the scoreboard and also after the game so you can see uh, scoring breakdowns, weapon stats, and other things. There's going to be more to come, but we're starting to, to lay that out so you can see it in game and then those stats will also feed to the persistent stats uh, on our back end. And um, and then also custom match creation is working again, so you can now Yay. create your match yeah. mm. games both on the so basically just like the um, the flow we had um, in the last build for creating matches, the same flow whether you're creating a standalone game or an instance on a hub, but now you can create your custom matches with all the same kinds of options you had before. So okay, just wanted to preface that. This might Case be like one of the biggest updates we have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. lots of awesome. Certainly, some of the most important are. Key so we told you that we were going to answer some of your questions, and here we are. <laughs> so the first, <laughs> I'm scared too. <laughs> the first question we have is from Oaks, and he wants to know if there will be any improvement on out mouse input. There were yeah. a few qu people who asked uh, this. He said it feels a little awkward at the moment. Yeah, I think um, there's definitely some more work. I mean, we definitely uh, know we need to look at that some more. Um, I think now also s there's some combinations of different things. So we definitely want to make sure that our uh, our mouse input is as low latency as possible. Uh, Pete, for this build, actually added some options to um, set acceleration, so you can set it up similar to uh, the acceleration scheme that some other games have. Still turned on, mm -hmm. off by default, but I think that may be part of uh, what some people are experiencing. I think also some of what people are complaining about right now has more to do with the uh, networking than the um, the actual mouse code. Um, there's a definitely, I have a list of things I need to improve with the networking, which will help with that. I think also once we have a bigger player population, some of it is if you're playing on a 100 ping server, it's just never going to have the same feel same as, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of, of hit, ac you know, hit consistency and just, and just the general feel. But, um, right. but I, I suspect there's also some, some real issues, especially in, in how we deal with the net code. There's also some stuff that we think uh, we'll, we're going to try to expose to the menu so that people, uh, so not in the build coming to tomorrow, um, but uh, in the next build, uh, so that uh, we can get feedback from players to experiment with, you know, like right now, um, and we intentionally, and it was not easy to do, made it so that uh, uh, weapon uh, firing is done after you move that um, frame, which gives you the best, your, your weapon is done as late as possible in the tick so that it's the most, um, it's as, as low an effective latency mm -hmm. relative to, but that's different than how we did in past games, and so I'd like to. I'm going to expose an option so that people can switch it back and forth, Whoa. so they can see what feels better for them. I think those kinds of things, in some cases, 
may not be a one way is actually better than the other, but it's more of a feel thing the of what feels more what natural to a given player. So um, I think it's a combination of all those different things, but we know, you know we want the input to be really, really solid and we know we're not quite there yet. Awesome. Well, hopefully I'll have to ask that one again. Yes, I'm sure we <laughs> will. Which, <laughs> which this one I'm asking again, <coughs> and I know I've asked once before, do, uh, or do we plan on implementing any new movement mechanics? Um, we still have a lot of things that we would like to experiment with. We're still doing some tweaks to movement, but right now that's not something we're focusing on. Just right. intentionally we're trying to focus more on the, um, on some of this more framework stuff like the spectating system and other things that um, can kind of uh, uh, get the game, give the game kind of a broader appeal. But we, but movement mechanics mm -hmm. is something that we certainly don't feel like we've completely nailed Hold down. On, right. And yeah. so it's certainly this is not a forever, and, and again, Unreal Tournament is is a living project, you know, even four months from now when we spend some more time on movement mechanics, we will still, that uh, still won't be done. Like it's still, it's still something where we want to always be experimenting. We want people to be making mods and prototypes that try out different ideas for what might be cool with gameplay and that, you know, over time, you know, you know, at some point we might have a season model where every season, you know, we look at at uh, changing making some things, changing like some things yeah. and tweaking it and, and keeping and the game fresh. It's also worth noting that the stuff that was there is is not done, is not completely polished yet. Yes. We have, you know, the slide is an example which isn't really used all that often. Yeah. Except by Pete K. But it has new animations, <laughs> it ha yeah. just has new audio that went in this week. We're working on new effects right now, so it yeah. should read better and hopefully you'll see also it more the Also, the entire animations kind of overall blueprint and system is still heavy yeah. Yeah. too, so yeah. Aaron's doing a ton of polish work on that. So, so like all of that stuff is yeah, getting, getting like better and more more visible, yeah. and I think that'll, that'll yeah. and improve the way it feels. It's a one-man effort right now, so it's just going to take yeah. some time yeah. to iterate and on. And there's, there's, but that's a great point. I, th I mean, there's a lot of feedback and polish that we haven't done yet, yeah. um, between either animations, effects, like we're actually going to start next week uh, trying some, uh, to start adding some effects so you can see when somebody wall dodges there's a clear effect so you it kind of improve the readability of how other players are moving uh, improving the the sound feedback for what you're doing and what other players are doing so there's a lot of, of polish and also just tweaking the you know I mean we're still playing around with all the numbers and tweaking we're probably not going to make any really drastic changes in the next few weeks but we're still you know tweaking and and arguing about all this values <laughs> 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 and discussing Steve yes, we're discussing discussing <laughs> yes, they've been discussing constructive things <laughs> engagement <laughs> on <laughs> so now we hear from from Rolf hello Rolf I played with him yesterday and uh, we we played last night with Matt CTF yeah. yes cool. had a good time it was uh, some great games well I only had one great game but that's okay um, this is kind of for Sydney. During the community event, uh, JO Plus and Sydney were talking about doors and maps and mentioned that the netcode might be an issue. Doors are about to be placed in a map I'm working on, and I'd like to know if there's some more information on that. Yes. <laughs> so what kind of door should we use? <laughs> 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 All right, next question. <laughs> <laughs> are, are matinee doors fine? No, so, so basically you want to do the same thing with doors that we have done with elevators and sort of have a generic actor. And Thomas Browett, one of the LDs that helps out once in a while, actually started implementing a first pass of a generic door blueprint that now lives in our oh example awesome. map. Yes. So yeah. he made a few variants, and some of this is coming from uh, stuff that J.O. has done before, and he kind of touched some of it up and mm -hmm. polished it up, and I'm sure there will be bugs and issues, but going forward, yeah. that would be the actor to reference for any iteration. If bugs come out, we'll fix them in that location, yeah. so it'll be awesome. nice and cohesive, and we don't have... 10 people with 10 different doors all done differently and just out in the wild. And just to be clear, you can take that, that same blueprint and you know change out the sounds, change out the, the meshes that are involved, and it's the functionality that we want yeah. duplicated. And so right. it's not like every door in the game has yeah. to look exactly the same. And well, everything will also be customizable from an actual, like, you can change it on the instance kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because yeah. we don't necessarily even want to force people to create their own instances or children of that same blueprint just yeah. to do another door. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Everything that's important should be exposed on that and we're also, you know, open and look forward to any feedback on what functionality that might Excellent. entail. He has yeah. a lot right now. It supports just open based on overlap on a volume. Um, there's a damage version that has an indicator actually, so there's shootable a doors. There's, there's a button a, there's that he a, has. There's a button shoot. There's a trap. Yep. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. So Thank yes. you, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that, that going to be in this build? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh awesome. You so know what? It's not. I don't have it listed on that. We will add that to the build notes. <coughs> and Zach, can you remember yep. to remind me? Because I will forget. I got you. Adrian UT wants to know if we're going to be improving netcode at all. 
he's having a hard time playing with his 120 yes. plus ping. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I think part of the problem, so your ping is not going to change because <coughs> your ping <coughs> is how far you are across yep. the internet from the server you're playing on. I mean, certainly as our, um, as our player population grows, it'll be easier to find servers with lower ping. But there's still a whole bunch of things that we're planning to do Lead to more. make the network, uh, to make <laughs> the net, net play better at it for a given mm -hmm. connection. Um, there's some things we can do to improve the relative um, lag, to improve our prediction of other player positions, um, to improve the bandwidth that we use. There's th so there's, I mean, I have probably three pages of notes, you know, of line items that I need to implement. So there's, there's a lot to do and <laughs> continuing to work on it and prioritize it um, as we go. There's a few improvements in this build. Um, I probably will spend even more time next uh, in the next couple of weeks working on that code. So. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Aztec asks, are there any new details on the matchmaking system? Um. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Uh, although, although hubs are undergoing yeah. Yeah. some improvement, which yes. kind of overlaps with that in strange ways. Yes. So hubs are, are kind of our, our, our pub matchmaking system, and we're going to actually start layering on top of that things like ladders and stuff like that. I mean, we see the hub as the basic framework for all the different ways that we want people to get matched together, whether it's you creating your own match, you being matched together with people, you playing with friends, like we're, we're going to use that as the kind of the common way that um, we implement all those kinds of functionality. And awesome. uh, we've got some ideas on how we do that. Um, there's still a lot to do, and it's not going to get there in the next two weeks. <laughs> but but it's, it's, work, it's we're working on it. We know it's important, yeah. There is, a, there is a skill ranking system in the game right now, yeah. but we are not 100% done with it or confident in it, so yeah. we don't want to be using it as matchmaking yeah. yet. But certainly, until you have a large player population, automatic matchmaking is just not going to work well. Yeah. And we, and I really, I personally prefer to give players all the information they need to find the match they want. We want to set up, you know, competitive opportunities yeah. like ladders and things like that, so mm -hmm. that people can know the skill of people they're 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 playing against and can set up the matches that they want to play. Um, at the same time, we also will probably have we'll have different automatic matchmaking systems like the quick match we've got now. That's we're kind of still working on improving and making that really um, seamless and do a good job of it matching people of equivalent skills and so forth. But um, okay. yeah, so it's an ongoing project. We know it's really important to do well, and uh, we will we uh, do it right. make the effort to do it right. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Wow, beggar. Heard from him. Um, are there any plans on implementing Replicam like tools in UT? I think it would be help, great help in uh, making impressive videos for Frag Center. Replicam was kind of this recording. Yep. Um, program that w they had in yeah, I mean so previous years. Go ahead. Go ahead if you want to. I was going to say that some of that stuff's already in there. You know, there's the the projectile cam and switching yeah. between in, in spectator mode and things like that. <coughs> um, and then on the back end, we have what we have coming is a new demo rec system that allow you to yeah. kind of replay a match and use kind of DVD like to con controls to rewind yeah. and and, and yeah. switch camera views around yeah. and do all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, so you won't be able to do that necessarily in real time yet, um, but you can go back and yeah. make some videos based off of that. Yeah. Well, in real time, so we have the spectator system that you can yeah, use in real time. Stuff you can the use same spectator time. system will also work with the replay system. And, um, and actually, the replay system, you can, I mean, the idea is you'll be able to use, do that in almost real time. So you'll be mm -hmm. able to use the same exact, the same framework, the same interface to go watch a match that was actually played the night before to go start five <coughs> minutes into a match, start from the beginning, start at the five minute mar mark and watch it live. You'll be able to pause it and rewind it mm -hmm. during gameplay. So you really will have all that functionality kind That's of built fine. together. Um, our plan is to have, so after we put this build out tomorrow, we're immediately updating to 4.8. 4.8 has the engine implementation of the replay system. And so that will be one of our primary focuses for the next build is to get the replay stuff up and running and functional enough to release to you guys. And so I can't tell you exactly what functionality will be there um, for the first release, but um, it's something that we are really excited about the poten Heck potential yeah. of. Um, you know, we've been asking people to make videos. Um, f videos for Frag Center, and we think that this is going to be one of the things that really enables the community to make fantastic videos. Yeah, because they're, yeah. they're very talented at the videos anyway, yeah. and yeah. the machinimas and stuff. And, and, and again, we have, we, have, uh, uh, we have also someone, one of our Cinemax guys in-house, who's working on specialized like camera tracks to do you know like slow pans and 360 yeah. camera and, and kind of build these in so you can be like oh right here I want to use this type of camera yeah. um, but I don't know ag again how quickly we'll be able to integrate that other than get the base system up and yeah. running but it's 
those rifle cam type things are s certainly in the works. Yep. Awesome. We heard from GeoDav, who's uh, been a longtime member of the community. Uh, is there any update on vehicle game types? He said he's trying, but he can't. He's not seem to getting anywhere. Um, I know there's. I think uh, Tim had done a little bit with vehicles as well. I don't know if he's posted oh, really? anything or what he's done. Um, I'll have to ask him. Um, we're still a ways away at Epic from focusing on vehicles. We still have a pretty full plate of stuff we want to do in terms of of core, you know, on-foot gameplay. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to be. We certainly will be experimenting with uh, improving, you know, tweaking our, our movement and stuff like that on on on-foot gameplay before we start uh, uh, entering the. I mean, vehicles is a huge project. Where mm -hmm. I, I love the vehicle game types, and we so I'm do. excited about doing it at some point. But Mostly. we really want to make sure we get this stuff right first. The the replay system, stats, all those other things are the things that we're focusing on right now. So we'll get to vehicles eventually, but but not quite yet. Somebody yeah. asked me yesterday when I was playing. When are we going to be able to ride nano wings again? I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's certainly months before Epic will be like in it. But hey, if somebody in the community, you guys start. Yeah, we would love and that. I mean, it, that's <laughs> kind of the case for all the classic game types. People have been looking at, you know, we had the domination game type that we looked at from the community. Mm -hmm. I would love to see somebody start on Assault because that's yeah. one of the, another one of those huge projects that yeah. we can't really handle right now. Um, so all, all of works. the classic game types, like the best way to get them back is for you guys to get together and do it yourself. Which assault would actually be relatively straightforward, I think. Right? Yeah. In terms of mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, assault probably is more reasonable for <coughs> a small community effort. Vehicles is just a lot yeah. of vehicles is hard. Yeah. Vehicles is like doing all the things we've done so far all over again. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. <So> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and certainly scale. it was a challenge. I mean, I, I haven't yeah. I haven't experimented a lot with vehicles <laughs> in UE4, but getting vehicles basically fun to drive in UE3 was a challenge. I mean, it probably took us a year to have some of those vehicles yeah. even kind of. Of course, <laughs> we were doing crazy dark walker type stuff too. So. Yeah. But I was th that was actually less hard than like just the, the Scorpion or the, the hoverboard. I mean, those <laughs> things. Because <laughs> you have an expectation for how those things drive. Yeah. And so when they don't, and it's, yeah. And then, yeah. Ah, vehicles. We'll you love we'll vehicle get there. games. I know yeah. you love ones a lot. <laughs> Okay, we uh, from Code One Eighty Seven, another longtime member of the community. My question is, how long will it be until we can rent servers like like from game servers, Game Tracker, etc., that can be set up through web admin like UT Ninety Nine, um, if at all? And he was looking at that for custom. Yeah, uh, he has he has yeah. a lot of custom content. So and he has to rely on Raxi right now. Yeah. So. so yeah, we need to figure that out. Um, I mean, I think there's two. L let me answer. It. We recognize the two the the, the need which is either for you to be able to run your own server or for us to make it easy for you to run custom content on a hub or whatever that's already on the internet. And so we're, we're thinking about how to solve that. Like that's really important. You know, the big focus of this project is community development and obviously for you guys to be successful developing maps um, as part of the community, you need to be able to easily test them. And so we're going to be working yeah. on improving that over time. And awesome. um, so I don't have a, a specific answer, but it it's really important to us and it's something that we're thinking about all the time. We know that it's been an important part yeah. of the community all these years, too. Yeah. So, uh, Regarding custom maps, when, when playing on custom map servers, say a cycle of five maps, I might play 10 to 15 maps, so three cycles each time. The same map comes around that I just downloaded 30 minutes ago and you have to, have to re-download. Will this be fixed soon so it stays in the cache? So. So it stays in the cache. I'm not sure what the. I mean, we changed. So for this. Every build, time you join a server, you have to redo the content that was there, even if you just downloaded it a minute ago. That's broken. We should fix that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did change it so that your map list is no longer limited when you're starting a match. Well, that's good. Um, so um, I was not aware that it was that limited. That's clearly not. Okay, right. Zach, that's one for you. Pardon? <laughs> so somebody, I guess somebody's <laughs> complaining that the. <laughs> somebody's complaining that the. That you only can that the cache for downloaded content, like you only cache five maps. That's yeah. We want to be able to cache. We don't want to limit yeah, it like that. That definitely sounds wrong and different from what I'm used to. Maybe they're talking about what was some of the builds before with what Raxi was having to do yeah. before re-downloading yeah. maps. Yeah. One eighty-seven. Look at it. Reach out to look at it, and we'll figure it out. Yeah, and we'll reach out to him and and make sure we yeah. know what's going on. This is my favorite question. <laughs> favorite because it's going to make me <laughs> wriggle, squirm. <laughs> when will we get voice taunts? Um, it was so much fun playing yesterday and having Mass just throw out those voice taunts every once in a while. It's like, oh god. It's yeah, we, we need. I, I really want to get. We're actually working on figuring out uh, doing a pass on announcers, mm -hmm. and we need to do a pass on voice taunts. Those are all 
clearly part of it what is makes on UT. My list, which is fluctuating in length, but yeah. it's on my <laughs> list. <laughs> Can you yeah. tell everybody your, your list? <laughs> yeah. But but we know that I mean those are things that are important to UT, and also I mean and some of them are also somewhat useful. And, you know, most and of them they're just making fun of other people, but that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's important too. Um, when will we be able to bind text to a key? We could do that now, or no? I thought you could. I thought you could you too. Could. I haven't tried it myself, but we should make that work. Yeah. Um, set input x say blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you could already. Jim is a noob. Jim is always a noob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we will we will check into it, make sure that, that that's possible. Yeah. Um, wi when will there be anti cheat? Um, I'm probably going to have for the next build a robust speed hack prevention mechanism. Um, that won't be bypassable in terms of speed hacking, but the bigger question of all the other ways that people can cheat, um, we know it's important. It's, it's an ongoing arms race, so it's not something that we're going to really take on until, until we, we, have, we have a more solid um, UT that, that we're ready. Um, you know, guys, this is a pre-alpha, and y community, you guys need to help us police this, but you know, don't use don't use cheats. I mean, keep the game fun. If somebody, um, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we just w it's just not something that we can stay on top of while we're still in heavy development like this. So, mm -hmm. um, but it is a priority for the future. For yeah, sure. Obviously, it has to be. It, it's mm -hmm. something that w people have to be confident that they're playing the game on an even playing field. It's important for this game, whether you're highly competitive or just a casual player. It's not any fun to play against somebody that's cheating. So. Yep. I can vouch for that one. <laughs> we play against Matt all the time. <laughs> 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 Same not that he's idea. not cheating, it just <coughs> seems like it. Yes, it does, that's for sure. Uh, Rakes wants to know, do you, t uh, do you take modeling concept of our characters from fans? <coughs> um, and he goes on to talk about what he likes. He loves a, a, a Barry's, um sapphire that he did in Axe's Eyebots uh, mm -hmm. models. Or uh, just from a few basic models, like the Necrus, because we have an infinite number of cosmetic items we can change now. Um, we may take concepts, I and mean we certainly, you know, um, Gooba started off as a community conceptor that was, I mean, we was just making stuff and we loved it, and so we started using. So there's certainly, concepts are certainly something we've gotten from the community. Uh, a bear use making our sniper rifle. Mm -hmm. So he concepted and started building the sniper rifle, and we decided to make it official. Um, in terms of like his sapphire, um, I mean, some of those we, we might take at some point. I think right now our our pipeline of how fast we can make character meshes internally is tight enough that it's not like there's going to be, I think we're pretty much already booked for quite a yeah. while. And we basically have one guy making characters at Epic. But we would love, really love, to see more community created characters. We'll have a uh, female uh, mesh soon that, we can, that people can use as a basis for making yes. um, other female characters so somebody could right. model. Um, Lauren sapphire, or sapphire user. Or whatever, yeah. and um, yeah, we would love to see a nice variety of of, uh, of characters coming from the community. Excellent. Yeah, we definitely want some female characters. Yeah. Uh, silently wants to know: Is it <laughs> is it possible to unblock unblock me from uh, downloading Unreal Tournament from the Epic Launcher? I did not know that there were still people having that problem. Yeah. But if you are having that problem, just write to accounts at UnrealEngine.com and they'll they'll take care of you. Um, I don't. I don't remember what the problem was, yeah. th th but there definitely was a problem. I thought it was fixed. If not, then make sure you write to them. Um, if you're still having problems, come back to the forums, and we'll, we'll definitely figure it out because we want yeah. you to be able to play. Uh, Num fifty one wants to know: Do you plan on adding cosmetic items reward system like CS:GO has? I had rumors. I heard rumors they will be included, but don't know. If so, would these rewards be both community and Epic created cosmetic items? Um, it's definitely something we're thinking a lot about right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of the cool, I think it's it's cool because it gives, those rewards are great for people who are into that, but it doesn't really affect <coughs> the game for people, people that are right. focused on the kind of the classic hardcore gameplay. Um, we definitely, you know, whether we do that, whether we do any kind of progression-based unlocks, whether you're buying stuff from the marketplace, all that stuff is going to be, uh, we definitely want community-created items as part of that. Yeah. And, um, and obviously, if anything that we're, um, Anything like that, like unlocks where where we make any money if we're using community c community stuff, then then the community creators will share. Awesome. Yeah. Will players get some sort of weekly, uh, monthly summary of their stats to show skill and progression? 
a, like a line graph or something that shows player accuracy if they went up or down? Um, so like I said, we're right now in the next build, we've got some in-mat stats. There's also some, there's also a persistent stats um, stuff right now that we're actually upgrading to a mo more robust backend, so it'll be, we'll, it'll be more persistent than <laughs> <laughs> it has been. <laughs> um, but we're going to continue um, improving those stats over time. The easiest place, the in-match stats are really nice because it's really easy for me to prototype and test stuff. And so I was like, you know, I did mm -hmm. uh, like one thing I did just for fun last week was a um, shot combo rating stat, which uh, rates your best combo based on um, <coughs> how many people you killed, how mu how fast you were moving when you shot it, whether you were in the air, oh, nice. um, how how much of an angle you are different from when you originally shot the ball, and so it kind of it gives you a rating and then get a little reward if you. Uh, Pull off something really cool. It does math. It does math. <laughs> but anyway, so <laughs> so <is> so <laughs> we'll be. So I would love to. I mean, I I think it's really fun to to have that kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh, with the persistent stats. Both um, we will be providing different ways of visualizing your stats, and we would love to have the community. Um, and we'll you know make sure that we enable the community to get stats and make their own visualization systems for looking at your progress oh, and stuff like awesome, that. So yeah. Awesome. Control yellow bird. Another person who's been around for a while. I don't even, I don't think that's what it's, it's CTR2 <laughs> Yellowbird, but I always look at it and yeah. say control. He's been around for a while. He helped us with the um, old UT3 servers. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of questions. A lot of questions. A lot of <laughs> questions. And he apologized in advance for these being such tough questions. So, Will Epic officially commit to developing vehicles, vehicle game types? We covered this one. Um, how many months did, uh, d d d was it going to take? Um, doesn't recall any definitive statements. We basically covered all that one, so yeah. he, I mean, it's he's a huge vehicle game type player, yeah. so that's why. It's it is months before we start, and it will take us months to build, but, um, and I really, I mean, I hope we get there. Um, I would love to get there as soon as possible, but we yeah, have a lot of other stuff we want to <laughs> get to, yeah. <laughs> he sits on the UT server, the, the Warfare server, yeah. to this day, pretty much, you know, yeah. for hours on end, so. Um, how does Epic uh, intend to profit or break even from developing the game? Is, th is there a business plan you can share? Um, is it intend intended to generate goodwill, good public relations, or is there a serious vision to recover development expenses? Um, we think that this game can be profitable. I mean, really, I mean, Epic has to make money to stay in business. I mean, my focus is on making a game that people love to play and building an audience. But at the same time, um, between the marketplace, between, you know, things like that. I mean, we'll come up with different ways. The game that we're creating, you know, we've promised will be free and yep. what Epic is creating and it, and it will be free and we won't paywall any of the gameplay or the, or have any win, pay, pay to win kind of right. scenarios. We've been pretty but adamant about we'll that. have, you know, but yeah, we'll sell cosmetic items. We might have, you know, unlockable stuff. I mean, unlockable <coughs> cosmetics and non-gameplay affecting things. We're, we're still working on that, working through that. Um, I actually think that, you know, for a lot of people, that can actually be part of what um, keeps the game fresh and interesting. And so yeah. we see that not just as a way to make money, but also as a way to give you a sense of progress and to, um, you know, and to give you things to show off. I mean, things right. you've earned or things, you know. And that's things one of the that things are that, rare. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the things we're doing, you know, even with the marketplace stuff we're talking about, like it's not just that you buy a hat, but you buy a hat that then has some special unlock when you've done something. <coughs> so, you know, you buy this you buy this hat and then if Which you get I love a, this idea. you know, a thousand kills in Insta Jib or something, or mm -hmm. you achieve a certain skill rating or you get to a certain level or something, you know, whatever, then it unlocks something and so it gives you a way of, of demonstrating your accomplishments. And so Basically, all those things are a lot more interesting if you're required to actually play and participate yeah. in the game in order to do something with them. And yep. or yeah. Them, yeah. yeah. So we're figuring that out. We want to do some th stuff that you guys like. I mean, obviously we can't. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I mean, at th in the long term, we expect that we think that UT is something that can make money. And we, we want to so. make a game that is really popular and, you know, people are happy to, to play and pl happy to uh, happy buy to the stuff that makes on. them happy. <laughs> In the weekly streams, Epic has maintained that this game will keep evolving, and so I have assumed that means by we extension... We are still maintaining that. Yes. <laughs> 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 Epic maintained. will continue <laughs> supporting this game in an active capacity after graduating UT from beta status. Uh, ideally, will Epic continue developing features, releasing maps, and patching after UT goes gold? And for that matter, which milestones remain in terms of major features than polish before UT goes gold? Um. Gold is a tough word. I mean, yeah. this is really a, a, a live project that's going to be ongoing. So I think in the sense of the concern about whether we're going, we're not, have, have no plans to abandon this project, this is something that we see as continuing to evolve long term. Um, 
So we're still calling ourselves pre-alpha now. I guess let me at least answer the question that is like, what would I call, what would I say we're alpha? Well, um, we've got a list of features that we want. So alpha from a point of view of the basic, the core deathmatch and CTF game, we're hoping to get to by the end of the summer. So this is not including, we still haven't done vehicles and all these other things right. we're excited about experimenting with the future. But we'll have our replay system with really robust functionality for searching. Frag Center will be a polished system. We'll have stats. We'll probably have some kind of, uh, you know, gear style leveling progression. and progression and mm -hmm. unlock to, you know, give people some sense of, of you know, how, how they're coming along. In addition to our skill rating systems, we'll have we'll have ladders and uh, competitive support on our hub. So there's this, this list of features um, that aren't there now that need to be there for us to, I think of alpha as being, we have all the, a, at a, a large scale, we have all the features we need in the game. So nothing is, is set in stone, nothing is polished and mm -hmm. finished yet, but all the different pieces there. We'd like to have uh, clan support is one of the other things we're gonna try to get in this summer. Um, and so I, our goal right now is to basically be at that point by the end of the summer. So, yeah. and yeah. we'll see, we'll see if we get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> all. Okay, um, Zo <laughs> Zocom7 wants to know, what, what are you developers trying to, uh, going to implement, uh, let me try that one again. When are we going to uh, implement the other game modes such as Bombing Run and La Last Man Standing, team, the, the team games that we played last week, uh, Vehicle CTF, well, vehicles we already talked about, but what about yeah. the other t game types? Um, I actually would love to see community members experiment with Bombing Run. I mean, one of the problems mm -hmm. that we had in the past, and I think Bombing Run is a perfect example <coughs> of being a victim of this, is what's most limited for a team, you know, even you know, in past UTs where we have a larger development team that we have here, is it's not the ability to develop a new game type like that, it's the ability to iterate on it, play test it, and polish it. I mean, we, we spend an hour every day play testing, that's just not enough to go through everything if you have a large variety of game types. And so Bombing Run really suffered that it didn't have enough iteration and play testing and love to really polish the mechanics for like passing the bomb between players and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And so that's the kind of thing that the, the actual game type is not that hard to make. And the, the trick is finding a passionate group of people that will work together to, to iterate, on. play test, and keep making it better. And so w I'd love to see you know, a community driven effort for that. We'll probably, I think we probably would, would, would experiment with it at some point. Mm -hmm. But I think it's likely to get go farther and faster if uh, if the community jumps yeah. in. And, works and a lot of these, especially assault, um, vehicle CTF, yeah. obviously. Assault is not small. Assault is uh, not. Yeah, a but, <laughs> but, but, but the point being, a lot of that requires very custom content as well. Yeah. And yeah, a again, lot of time. here's our level designer on the team, right? So it's <laughs> it's not like we can do all these different game types and all the game the testing yeah. and all the content to support yeah. them. So. But I mean, the nice thing with Bombing Run is you can start off, I mean, certainly Bombing Run can benefit from from very bespoke you know, levels that are designed just for Bombing Run, but you can start off you with a CTF map with an and, CTF, yeah. and get it pretty far along in terms of figuring out how the gameplay is going to work before you really need custom maps. It's the kind of thing you don't necessarily want to bottleneck yourself trying to develop a new or redoing an old game type by requiring a map in the equation where you have yeah. to start yeah spending time and effort and play testing and just figuring out, hey, is this map even actually worth anything or work yeah. for something? Yeah. It's, it's a time sink to start with yeah. that in tandem. So I think you'll also yeah. very quickly, if you, s if you started building Bombing Run and you spend a few weeks play testing it on just RCTF maps, you'd realize what was what would work what better, was needed, yeah. Yeah. Like what yeah. was needed, how you needed it to change. The core mechanics like passing or weapon yeah. play, et cetera, you'd be able to figure that out yeah. in CTF maps. So yeah. Yeah. I'd love to play some bombing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when will further uh, facial animations of other characters be implemented? Um, I'd love to have facial animation. We have one animator, so yeah, he wrote he wrote about this today. I, I he think yeah, he he's got a response. <laughs> so yeah. it's a little ways out. Um. <laughs> I actually have it somewhere. There we go. Aaron said facial anim animation. I haven't given much thought to it yet, so that. That will work f uh, for community-made faces. Since following an already existing specific bone structure would probably be too limiting, perhaps face shapes will be the way to go. Still up in the air, though, honestly. Yeah. So we're up in the air on that one. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that that's really cool for screenshots and every once in a while in gameplay. But most of the time, 
at the speeds and the t play distances, moving. you're you're not going to see that much. Yeah. But it would be cool. I mean, I'd love and to. And considering have we only have two characters right now, doing a lot of character facial animation yeah. is probably not a, the best investment of our time. Yeah, yeah. Sure. overall. Um, when will the current maps get fully meshed with textures that are already in the game? That's a good question. Um, well, we're continuing to do work on. We're actually working, working on, on a more, new yeah. environment set. Uh, we're starting to do some some experimentation with some additional meshing a little bit, and so it, we're still a ways off. I mean, we don't want to do too much while. I mean, we're, we're, there's a good reason for things to be shells for a while, as it allows us to really iterate up on them more productively. Mm -hmm. um, but as we get more um, more environment sets done, I think we'll we'll start. Yeah, uh, our, our level design team. The real, <laughs> <laughs> the real, the real bottleneck is yeah having a library of assets yeah. that can be used to do stuff with yeah. you know those Lego pieces. Yeah. yeah, once that gets a little bit broader, then it'll be easier for us to spend less time on taking an existing set and meshing existing shells and. Yeah. Same for the community as well. And I, I would actually love for uh, some people to take some of those community shells that are out and use the assets that, that are there yeah. to experiment and try new things. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, we have, if, if you go back to one of our old uh, streams with Josh Marlowe, he showed how you can you know, change the, the lighting and change the color of the yeah. meshes. So you can actually yeah. use Scaling, there, rotating, scale, using rotate, in creative ways. You can colors. get a lot of different looks out of the, mm -hmm. the, the output yeah. set. Which was like ba back in UT, a lot of the things like, oh, this is a door, but now it's going to be a lift. Yes. You know, yeah. so <laughs> he, he explained that you can yeah. still do yeah. things like this. This door frame can be a pipe and yeah. stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah, make sure you go back and check it out if you're making some levels and you want to uh, texture them. So last week I forgot to show everybody the concept art of the week, which was really sad because it's Aww. so awesome. <laughs> this, is, this was probably my favorite. So Victor, also known as Polyneutron, did a whole bunch of 4K screenshots and here, here it is, and this is just amazing. I can't imagine why you like this screenshot. Stacey. I can't imagine <laughs> either. I mean, fly. <laughs> but he, some of them are just absolutely gorgeous. We yeah. did a story uh, about him on the blog. Um, he explained how he did the shots and and what he does to get the the fantastic pictures he does. Does and Chris Perna loved them as well, and he took one of them and, and added to it. So they are all on the blog. Um, head over to unrealtournament.com. It's still one of the top stories. And check out these screenshots. They make they just make some really great desktops and stuff like that. Have this one on my phone. So. Yeah. All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. Um, we're Pete Hayes is going to be here. Yes. I believe Pete Hayes is going to be here. Sydney's going to take a look at a community map, and we may take some more of your questions that we didn't get to this week. Pete Hayes will show off the link gun, which is uh, really oh, cool. yeah. which is really awesome. Yeah. All right, guys, watch the Unreal Engine stream tomorrow, and we'll see you next week.